Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's everyone doing? Yeah. How's everyone doing? Yeah. Good, good, good. I noticed that um, all the speakers said a joke and everyone laughed. So during the next 18 minutes, I'm fingers crossed that I'm going to say something so funny that you guys can laugh. In fact, can you laugh now, please? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So my name is Oni Anyado. I'm a double award winning entrepreneur, keynote speaker and author. I specialize in leadership development, entrepreneurship and youth impact coaching. So that means through my vision, I go to schools, youth organizations, seminars, conferences, universities, challenging, empowering, equipping, inspiring people to become leaders, students, or entrepreneurs of distinction. Um, unfortunately, my life always wasn't that great. It wasn't always a bed of roses. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning, in the beginning. Um, that's me there as a, young, as a young Obama, as they call me. Um, as Daniel rightly so said, I was born and raised in Hackney, which is, um, I was born and raised in Dalston, which is like 20 minutes drive away, to a 2.4 family, my father, my mother, my sister and myself. Unfortunately, at an early age, my father left, and so for the majority of my childhood years and the majority of my teenage years, my mother brought up my sister and myself by herself. And I remember it was kind of tough. She used to pawn her jewellery so she can buy food for us to eat. We had a black and white TV for a very, very long time, and it was... It was quite hard. I went through the system, i.e. education system. I went to school, I went to college, I went to university. I think if my memory serves me right, I went to university to study, I think it was business and management or something on them lines. Unfortunately, when I got to university, a particular lifestyle called the street life, I started living that lifestyle. It was a criminal lifestyle, a gang mentality. And in that lifestyle, six of my friends got shot dead. I nearly got shot dead and I went to prison twice. I know some of you said like, oh my gosh, where's my iPhone, where's my iPad? I'm joking, I'm joking. So I really lived there. Um, as I said, six of my friends got shot dead. I nearly got shot dead, the bullet missed me by that much. I really been there and done it. Um, went to prison twice. Um, I was a young man, I was kind of angry at the system, angry at the world. I didn't have no purpose, I didn't have no vision. I was just living a particular lifestyle. And I, at one point in my life, I got fed up of being fed up. I was fed up of going to funerals. I was fed up of seeing my friends in jail. I was fed up of going to jail. I was fed up of dodging bullets. I was fed up of being fed up. There was something inside of me so strong that I knew that I was better than this particular lifestyle. On the 2nd of November, 2008, I became a Christian and my life changed forever. I should say it changed for good. And I founded two companies, B1 Coaching and Onion Yard or Media House, which will be the next slide. Um, B1 Coaching and Onion Yard Media House. As I said, I go to schools, I go to colleges, I go to youth organizations, I challenge people, I inspire people, I really, really, really equip people to become leaders and entrepreneurs of distinction. So that's Onion Yard on Media House and B1 Coaching. Um, I'm currently doing a university tour of all the universities up and down the country called Your Time Is Now, How to Become a Student of Distinction. I've written two books, well, I've written eight books, self-published two, the third one's on the way. My first book is Hitting the Target, A 12-Month Guide to Distinction. My second book is called The Doorway to Distinction, 200 Quotes to Inspire You to Reach Levels of Excellence. As you can see, my message, my ethos is excellence and distinction, excellence and distinction, excellence and distinction. This is quite ironic, as a young man, I went to university, but I didn't pass university. I didn't pass in my degree course. But now I'm actually going back to university to challenge and teach students to become entrepreneurs of distinction. I'm excited about life. You've only got one life to live. I, don't, I personally don't believe in reincarnation. I don't believe you're gonna come back as a fox, because if you do come back as a fox, and so happen you, a fox goes across the A46, you're gonna die and get knocked over. So, <laughs> so I'm not really, wow, you guys laughed. That's two laughs. I'm doing actually quite well. I'm gonna get three laughs today anyway. So as I said, I have a passion, I have a vision, I have a mission, I have a, I have a gift, I have a talent to really challenge people to become entrepreneurs of distinction. Not just entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs of distinction. As you know, it's the world is changing at an alarming rate. I mean, the world, we're embracing entrepreneurship on such an awesome level now. I mean, we've, we can mention Richard Branson, Sir Alan Sugar, and these some of, some of the great, Oprah Winfrey, some of the great entrepreneurs that we know. As I said, what was great two years ago now is, is obsolete now. And I wanna challenge you and speak to you and encourage you how to become an entrepreneur of distinction. Some of the things I, I, I use as principles that have worked for me, um, as I said, B1 Coaching and Onion Yard and Media House. That's my vision, that was my dream. When I was a young man, I didn't have no vision, I didn't have no dream. I mean, I always wanted to be a counselor, that was my vision, you know, when I was living that street life to help people. But thankfully, through my companies, I'm now challenging people to become the best they can be. Um, entrepreneurship is not nothing new, interestingly enough. I mean, if you go online, 
the first recorded um, definition of an entrepreneur is, I think, from the early 1700s. But I realized that entrepreneurship is actually from 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago in ancient Egypt and the Mesopotamian valleys when the, when the Egyptians were trading and buying stuff and they were making a profit. So that's entrepreneurship. So early this year, in February 2013, to be precise, I gave a definition of an entrepreneur. I said an entrepreneur is a leader of excellence, trailblazer, and pioneer who constantly brings change to their generation. I mean, the slide's not that great, so I'll say again. An entrepreneur is a leader of excellence, trailblazer, and pioneer who constantly brings change to their generation. I was, I said, I was a young man, I didn't have no vision, I didn't have no purpose, I didn't have no dream, so now I believe it's time for you as individuals to become entrepreneurs, but not just entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs of distinction. We're living in exciting times now. Don't always believe what they say on the news and on the newspaper about recession, 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 or crime, 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 crime. There's opportunities out there. There's opportunities for every single one of you who really want to get to new levels of life. One of the principles that I believe that can really distinguish you in 2013 and 2014 and beyond is vision. Having a clear and defined vision for your life. I mean, can you imagine it? 2013 is finished already. And before we know it, it's Happy New Year, and it's going to be 2014. And then before we know it, it's going to be 2015. And before we know it, it's going to be 2020. So I, I want to challenge you and ask you, what's your vision? What's your long-term vision? You know, it's interesting that we, um, some people, they get a 25-year mortgage. That's someone else's vision. They get a 10-year life insurance. That's someone else's vision. Some of us, we've got a 24-month 24, uh, 24 contract on our iPad or our iPhone. That's a vision. But for us as individuals, it's so important to have a clear and defined vision for your life. A 25-year vision, a 10-year vision, a 5-year vision. But you might say, Oni, five years, that's a long time. It's not. Before we know it, as I said, the year's going to be over, and it's going to be 2014. And I think, I mean, I live in a quite a nice part of town, and I, I'm very observant. And I see some of the elderly people, and I say to myself, I wonder if they live their life vision. Or was it just wake up in the morning, have some breakfast, rush to work, read the metro, get on the train, sit in front of an office, come home, sit on social media, and before we know it, 40, 50, 60, 70, and we haven't fulfilled our life's vision. As I said, we've got one life to live, and I'm going my to my, maximize my life to the fullest. Imagine when the guy tried to shoot me dead, because we really, were really living that lifestyle. Imagine the bullet hit me. I'd be dead now. I wouldn't be living my life. I'm pretty sure none of you are involved in any gangs. I see some young gangsters here, only joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure none of you are involved in gangs. So you, why don't you maximize your life? Live life to the fullest. Sometimes I wake up at six, seven o'clock in the morning. I'm so excited because life is there to be excitable. And as I said, entrepreneurship is sweeping the world at an alarming rate. It's interesting. It's interesting. Entrepreneurship now is the new black, is the new word, is the new in thing. So for to become an entrepreneur of distinction, one of the things that's going to distinguish you is to have a clear, defined vision for your business, for your career. A financial vision. I mean, as a young man, I used to spend so much money on clothes and clothes and trainers and clothes and trainers and clothes. But I've made up my mind, some of the greatest entrepreneurs that we look up to, that we inspire, they've got a financial vision. And your financial vision could be saying, okay, do you know what? Every month I get paid, every month I receive my salary, I'm going to save £10. That's a vision. It could be £100 you're going to save. But let's get to the point when every month we look back and we save, we save £10, £100, £1,000, a million pounds a month. Because that's what's going to distinguish you. To some of the greatest leaders that we look up to, they've got a clear and defined financial vision. Let's get out of the ordinary of... Every time we get paid, we go and spend out, we go out. We, you know, I'm not saying don't enjoy life, but there's so much investments one can make. Have a mental vision. Someone once said that readers are leaders. I've made up my mind that at least every month I'm going to read at least three books, minimum. Readers are leaders. So whatever industry you are, whatever vision you are, start reading books, start reading journals. A great man once said that being current is the currency of life. How many people just, the only thing they read is a local free newspaper on their train? and they don't know what's happening in the world of business. So for you to become distinguished in 2013 and beyond, because this year is nearly finished, have a mental vision. And even if you can't manage three books a month, say to yourself, at least every month I'm gonna read one book. It could be your autobiography. It could be one of my books. It could be uh, a <laughs> plug. It could be a journal on your particular field. But I believe it's so, it's so important to have a mental vision. Some of the greatest people, as I keep saying, Sir Richard Branson, minimum, he reads at least three books every month. Minimum. Minimum, minimum. And as I said, entrepreneurship is sweeping the world now. So why don't we embrace it and become entrepreneurs of distinction? Also, I want to talk about time management. How to manage, master, and maximize your time. Every human being, white, black, young, 
old, rich and poor, we've got many things in common. But one thing we've all got in common is time, 24 hours. I'm going to far say that I believe that the greatest currency in the world is not the dollar, is not the pound, but in fact, it's time. So what do you do with your 24 hours? Do you invest it? I mean, imagine 24 hours was a gold bar. Do you invest it? Do you pull it under your bed or do you waste it? To become an entrepreneur of distinction, you've got to know how to manage, master, and maximize your time. With the, with the birth of social media, I think social media is one of the greatest inventions in recent history, but sometimes I've done it. I've sat down on Facebook for two hours nonstop, looking at people's pictures, going up the timeline, commenting, and then I realized that I've wasted two hours doing much do about nothing. So to become um, distinguished in your chosen career, if you're a student, if you work in, a, in an organization, or if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business person, learn how to manage, master, and maximize your time. I do a lot of life coaching, a lot of personal coaching, and I realize that a lot of my clients say, oh, I don't know where the time's gone. But every single one of us have got the same time, and that's 24 hours in a day. So I want to challenge you, like I always challenge myself, is maybe next week you can say to yourself, what do I do for 24 hours? If I sleep for maybe seven, eight hours, I go to work, what do I do for the six, seven hours? And one can do so much towards your goals, towards your career, towards your business, to, to, you can read a book for two hours. I've got a TV, but I don't particularly watch TV no more. I don't really watch TV because sometimes we can sit down watching Coronation Street or watching whatever soaps out there and it's not really edifying us, it's not really helping us with our vision. Remember, you need to have a clear and defined vision for your life. Let's start enjoying our own vision rather than other, other people's visions. So that was vision, that was time management. One of the things I really, I really am strong about is um, creativity. It's interesting, um, TEDx, TED is someone's creative idea. Steve Jobs had a creative idea. Richard Branson had a creative idea. One of the things that's gonna distinguish you in 2013 and beyond is a creative idea. Creativity makes the world go round. It's not necessarily money, it's creative ideas. So that dream, that vision, what's that idea that you wanna to bring to your world? I mean, you heard my story. I was a gang member. I went to prison twice. Six of my friends got shot dead. Six of them in the space of three years. It was hectic. Someone tried to kill me. The bullet missed me by that much. So imagine I would have been dead now. I wouldn't be here now. So now I'm giving birth to creative ideas that I believe that will inspire my generation. Because it's interesting, your vision shouldn't just be about you, yourself, and I. Your vision should impact, influence, and inspire the previous, present, and the future generation. I say again, your vision should so impact the previous, the present, and the future generation. I'll give an example. Henry Ford, many of us have been in a Ford car before. His vision... 100 years later, his great-grandchildren are still running with the vision of the Ford car. That's amazing. In the 1900s, he had a creative idea for the first Ford car, and 100 years later, his great-grandchildren are running with the vision. So what's your vision? How do you want to impact your world? And don't let, oh my gosh, um, there's a recession out there. There might be a recession, but so many multimillionaires are being made in a recession, so there's opportunities out there. Is it fear? Um, scientists or psychologists say that fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. 80% of the things that we're scared of never happens. Oh, I can't do it because I'm black. Oh, I can't do it because I'm white. Oh, I can't do it because I haven't got no money. My first book, Hitting the Target, A 12-Month Guide to Distinction, I remember clearly, 2010, I had the creative idea. I was living at my mum's house. I didn't have no money. I didn't have a laptop to write a book. Can you imagine? You know, when some people say they didn't have no money, I didn't have a pound to my name. Both my, both my bank accounts were overdrawn. I didn't have a pound to my name to buy scrap paper, to buy A4 paper. So when I had the idea for the book, I had to use scrap paper. I had to use scrap paper in my mother's house. I remember clearly. And now the book sold out around the world. But imagine I didn't have that creative idea. Imagine I waited for conditions to wait. Imagine I said, well, if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it. So I want to really challenge you and encourage you, that vision that you've got at the back of your head. Don't be scared. Because you remember, in 2010, I didn't have a penny to my name, but I managed to write a book. And I remember when I was living in Hackney, going to different internet cafes, asking them, begging them, can I use your internet, please? They said, yeah, one pound for one hour. I said, I haven't got no money on me. They said, sorry, mate, you can't use it. But imagine I would have given up. Imagine I would have given up on my dreams. Imagine when I give up on my vision. I wouldn't be a double award winner keynote speaker now. If I didn't take that step of faith in 2010, I wouldn't be here now speaking to you guys. So what's your vision? What's your dream? What do you want to achieve in life? You've heard my story. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. In fact, I grew up with a broken spoon in my mouth, to be very, very fair. So I have a clear, defined vision. The next thing I want to speak about is about excellence. Excellence is like, is like currency. It really makes the world go round. It's like creativity. It really makes the world go round. We are consumers of products of excellence. We are consumers of products of excellence. 
the iPhone, the tablet, the clothes, the shoes, the aftershave, the perfume, they're products of excellence. So as entrepreneurs, we should actually start producing products of excellence as well. You will never ever go to a shop and buy a mediocre phone. You will never ever go to a shop and buy a mediocre phone. You will never ever go to a shop and buy a mediocre suit. So to become an entrepreneur of distinction, start producing products of excellence. Start producing services of excellence. Excellence and currency is a creativity, is a currency that makes the world go around. As I said, I was a young man, born and raised 20 minutes from here, and I'm living my dream. In fact, I'm not really living my dream, I'm living my vision. And what's your vision? What do you want to achieve in life? Life is here to be enjoyed. We've only got one life to live, so let's maximize our life. Let's be a reference point to the next generation. A few years ago, the UK came up in smoke. There was a riot. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Young people coming together to riot. But the reason, one of the reasons why they riot is they didn't have no role models, they didn't have no reference points. So let's become that generation. Let's become this generation where we bring, bring so much to society. Have a clear, defined vision. No matter what your vision is, you could, be, you could be a writer, you could be an author, you could be a bank manager, you can be whatever you want to be in life. But it starts from today. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let people's opinions stop you. Don't let the news stop you. Oh, um, the majority of businesses fell in the first, 85% of businesses fell in the first two years. So why don't you become that 15%? Remember, an entrepreneur is a leader of excellence, trailblazer and pioneer who constantly brings change to their generation. I never knew in a million, zillion, trillion years I'd be doing a TED Talks. Not in a million years. Not in a million years. I remember clearly sitting down in prison, scratching my head, thinking, what's life all about? I remember running from people trying to shoot me. But then I also remember writing six books in the space of two years. I also remember founding two companies. I also remember training, equipping people to become leaders. So if I'm living my vision, if I went from detention to distinction, what's stopping you? An entrepreneur is a leader of excellence, trailblazer and pioneer who constantly brings change to their generation. And I believe it's time for us as a community, us as a nation, us as a country, to constantly bring change. Let's give birth to creative ideas. Let's become the modern day Steve Jobs. Let's become the modern day Oprah Winfrey's. Let's become the modern day Henry Ford's and leave a legacy for the previous generation, the present generation and the future generation. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a wonderful audience. Give yourself a round of applause.